Hello, I'm Peter Blackwood and this video is a uh, meditation, a, a reflection on an icon of Mother Teresa, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. It's been prepared for the Uniting Church Icon School members and if you are viewing this from beyond that membership you are most welcome. So let me start by saying that this icon has been painted within the last few weeks and her commemoration day, her Saints Day, is the 5th of September. This reflection, this information comes from a, an article written by uh, Chris Walker. Her birth name was Agnes and she was born in 1910 of Albanian parents at Shropshire in Yugoslavia. She was one of three children. She attended the government school, but also had good priests who helped the boys and girls to follow their vocation according to the call of God. At 12, she first knew she had a vocation to the poor. While at school, she became a member of the Sodality. At that time, the Yugoslav Jesuits had accepted to work in the Calcutta Archdiocese. One of them sent enthusiastic letters about the mission field. And these letters were read regularly by the Sodalists. Young Agnes was one who wanted to become a missionary and volunteered. Toward the end of 1928, she was sent to Loretto Abbey in Dublin, Ireland, and from there to India to begin her novitiate. For 20 years, she taught geography at St. Mary's High School in Calcutta. For a few years, she was principal of the school. She was also in charge of the Daughters of St. Anne, the Indian religious order attached to the Loretto sisters. She loved teaching, but then came a change of direction. In 1946, she was going to Darjeeling to make her retreat. In the train she heard the call to give up all and to follow Christ into the slums to serve him among the poorest of the poor. First she had to get permission from the ecclesiastical authorities to live outside the cloister and work in the Calcutta slums. In 1948 Mother Teresa laid aside the Loretto habit and clothed herself in a white sari with blue border and cross on the shoulder. She went to Patna for three months to the American Medical Missionary Sisters for intensive nursing training. By Christmas she was back in Calcutta living with the Little Sisters of the Poor. She began by going into homes to see the children and the sick. Then she started a little school. She also gave practical lessons on hygiene. Gradually the work grew and other women came to help and provide support. The first ten girls who came to help were all students of Mother Teresa. One by one they surrendered themselves to serve the poorest of the poor. In 1950 the new congregation of the Missionaries of Charity was instituted in Calcutta. Other helpers came. Doctors and nurses came on a voluntary basis to help. In 1952, the Home for the Dying was opened, and this began when she literally picked up a dying woman from the street. The hospital only took her in because Mother Teresa refused to move until they accepted her. From there, she went to the municipality and asked for a place to bring dying people. She was given the use of an empty Hindu temple. She wanted to make the destitute feel that they are wanted and so are shown human, human and divine, has shown human and divine love. A children's home was established in 1955. Work among lepers began in 1957, when five lepers came because they had lost their jobs. In 1963, the Archbishop of Calcutta blessed the beginnings of a new branch, the Missionary Brothers of Charity. In 1965, the Missionaries of Charity became a Society of Pontifical Right, which showed the appreciation of the Pope for the work. The work spread to other parts of India, then to other poor areas in the cities of the world. They seek to express the love of God, holding that Christ is found in the sacrament and in the slums, in the little people they seek to help. 
In later years she travelled, such as to assist and minister the hung, to the hungry in Ethiopia, the radiation victims of Chernobyl and earthquake victims in Armenia. Mother Teresa is remembered as a person who served the poorest of the poor and inspired others to do also. She saw the poor ones in the world's slums as like the suffering Christ. In them God's Son lives and dies, and through them she saw God's face. For her, prayer and service were bound together. Her voice and example are heard today in her emphasis on the needs of the poorest of the poor, in seeing Christ in them, and in holding that prayer and compassionate action are both required. So let us meditate on this icon and on the life and ministry of Mother Teresa by listening to her words. Be faithful in small things, because it is in them that your strength lies. Spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. We ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean. But the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. Intense love does not measure, it just gives. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. The hunger for love is much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. If you can't feed a hundred people, then feed just one. I have found the paradox that if you love until it hurts, there can be no more hurt, only more love. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can The most terrible poverty is loneliness and the feeling of being unloved. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. What can you do to promote world peace? Go home and love your family. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. I'm not sure exactly what heaven will be like, but I know that when we die, and it comes time for God to judge us, He will not ask, how many good things have you done in your life? Rather, he will ask, how much love did you put into what you did? If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. <laughs>